I just got these animals some dinner. And if you take a look right there, that red calf looking that way, he's number 10. And uh, I realized that he was just kind of not looking very uh, good for a couple of days. And this morning I took a look at him and uh, he's uh, not looking very good. And you can see him right there, he's not eating. And so this morning I gave him a shot of Zach Tran. And uh, I'm gonna have to see how he's doing by tomorrow morning. Uh, usually these antibiotics, they'll kick in within 24 hours. And so today, uh, the big thing that I'm going to talk about is that, you know, this whole thing, I, and I've talked about this uh, r repeatedly in the past, but this whole thing about making more money. And so uh, I'm actually in a situation right now, uh, as of today, I am looking to increase, I am going to increase my income by 70% within the next six months. And so uh, I figured that I would go through this process with y'all because I've already talked about money. Uh, I've talked about money in thorough detail. And the big idea about money is that, you know, when, it, when you really look at the world, if you, have a, if you have a long enough investment time horizon, if you invest for a long enough period of time, you can buy about 98% of anything on the planet if you have $60,000 a year. Uh, about 98% of anything on the entire planet you can buy if you make $60,000 a year. You know, if you want to buy a Mercedes Benz, you can you can buy a Mercedes Benz if you if you have $60,000 a year. I mean, uh, you know, if you uh if you trade in a car and then uh if you I mean, if that's what you really want, I wouldn't I'm not saying that you should go around and uh drive a Mercedes Benz because you make $60,000 a year, I would actually discourage that. I mean, if you, uh, if you make $60,000 a year and let's say, uh, you go and, uh, I mean, you can practically buy whatever you want. I mean, if you want to buy a, a rental property, you can buy a rental property because if you make $60,000 a year and you take it to the bank and you say, Hey banker, I want to buy a rental property. I make $60,000 a year. Granted that you're not horribly underwater, you know, uh, granted that you haven't made a horrible choices up until this moment, the banker will probably fund the deal up for you uh, up to about a half a million dollars. I mean, you could probably go and buy a rental property for about half a million dollars. If you, if you make $60,000 a year, I mean, uh, if you cannot convince a banker to sell to to fund a, a half a million dollar rental property for you, I mean, you probably need to work on your sales pitch, because at the end of the day, it's like you know, if you make if you make sixty thousand dollars a year and you find a rental property and you take a look at the rental contracts and it's a half a million dollar property, you know, and it's like if you cannot uh, clearly express to the banker that the rental property essentially pays for itself. And it's like if, if you talk to the banker and the banker says, well, you need to put a 10 percent down payment on it, that's 50 grand. Then, you know, and it's like if you don't have 50 grand, then you can finance it. You can sell or finance it. I mean, you can uh, ask the owner if they'll give you a one year non-payment agreement. I mean, uh, you can do something. I mean, you can figure it out. And once you figure it out, I mean, they'll uh, they'll fund the deal for you. Right. And at the end of the day, I've already talked about the whole idea of purchasing an asset is that when you purchase an asset, you're looking for assets that will pay for themselves, right? I mean, that's the big idea. You want to be in a situation where when you like, let's say you buy it, let's say you buy a rental property, let's say you go out and you find a fourplex or you find a, uh, a rental property and the rental property is, uh, let's say uh, the rental property when you, uh, when you finance it from the bank. Let's say it's going to cost you a three thousand dollars a month, but when you buy the rental property, you make six thousand dollars a month. Then the five thousand to four thousand dollars, let's say it makes you fifty five five thousand dollars a month, right? It makes you five thousand dollars a month, and the bank wants uh, three thousand five hundred dollars a month. So you net positive cash flow thousand five hundred dollars. Well, where do you get the three thousand five hundred dollars from? You get it from the asset itself, right? I've already talked about this twenty thousand times. It does not matter what business you're in. All businesses are essentially run the same way. It does not matter. You could be a cattle farmer. You could be in the residential real estate. You could be in commercial real estate. You could be in the retail business. You could be in the service business. You could be in the stock market business. You could be in any business and they're all essentially run the exact same way. You know, you're looking for assets to pay for more assets, essentially. 
And uh, I'm not suggesting that anybody go and do anything. At the end of the day, it's your choice. And I've already said that there is no such thing as a universally good idea, right? I've already talked about this uh, this idea uh, for a long time. There is no such thing as a universally good idea. A good idea for me is going to be different than a good idea for you. It's going to be different than a good idea for Billy Joe Bob. It's going to be a different... It's, going, it's A good idea for every individual is a different good idea. And it is possible to have bad ideas. A lot of people are, are a massive collection of bad ideas. I mean, it's like if you want to see... I mean, I've seen people who legitimately bankrupt when they're 70 years old. And it's like if you take a look at the entire course of their life, it's like, you know, you held on to some worthless business... Until you were 70, I mean, you legitimately started your business when you were 35, and you held on to that business for 35 years. I mean, your business never really made that much money. If anything, you were slowly losing money, and it's like, you know, you barely made a middle-class life. I don't know what, I mean, was a, why did you hold on to this worthless business for 35 years? I don't understand. I'm not asking, I'm not asking to understand. I mean, keep it to yourself. I don't, I don't want to know. And it's like, you see, I see it happen all the time. I mean, I must have seen it happen three times in the last two years. It's like, you know, I meet somebody who's 65 years old and they bankrupted. It's like they bankrupted at 65 and, you know, now they're talking about they need to go and work as a cashier at a grocery store. And it's like, you know, and it's like when you take a look at their life, it's like they spent 25 years running a business, 35 years running a business that never really even made money to begin with from the very beginning. It's like, why did you hold on to this worthless idea for 35 years? I don't understand. You could have legitimately just left and gotten a job and you would have worked half as much and made the same amount of money and you would have had a retirement plan. I don't know who told you it was a good idea to start a business, but it was a horrible idea to start a business. For most people, it is a horrible idea to start a business. I can almost guarantee that, you know, 99% of people is like, you know... 99% of people who say they want to be starting a business should not be starting a business. I mean, you know, and at the end of the day, it's like if you just went out and got a job, I mean, if you just went out and got a job and you had a retirement package and you had insurance benefits and, and whatever it may be, and it's like, congratulations, you made the same amount of money as you would have if you started your worthless business. And it's like if you bankrupt at 35 and you're, a, and you're an entrepreneur – you know, if you own your own business and you bankrupt when you're 65, congratulations, you don't have retirement. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You legitimately don't have retirement. You're screwed. You're going to have to go and work somewhere. I mean, uh, you know, go uh, go and work uh, at, a, at a grocery store as a cashier. I mean, I don't know. I mean, legitimately, I've seen it happen three times in the last two years. You know, someone who's 65 years old, they held on to a worthless business for 25, 35 years, and then they bankrupted. And now they're sitting in a situation where they're 65 years old with no retirement. Their business never made money to begin with. I mean, it barely made enough for them to just get by. And now they're sitting there with no retirement. And, you know, and it's like, congratulations. I mean, you know, it was just a, 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 a plethora of bad decisions, right? I mean, just constantly making bad decisions left and right all the time. And it's like, you know, and that, that's what happens. Right. I mean, congratulations. That's what happens. I mean, you're going to have a, at a certain point in time. I mean, you're just going to have to take a look at the world. And, you know, and at the end of the day, if you know, I'm not saying that, like, I'm not like uh, condemning these people. Right. I'm not saying like, uh, you know, but I'm saying that we should probably take a look at these at these situations and begin to understand. You know, and it's like uh, maybe when I show you what I see in my life. Then maybe maybe you'll uh, maybe it'll just it just is what it is. I always say the thing about honesty is that if if you're honest, you might you know you might come off as a as a uh, as a whatever. I mean, but at the end of the day, if you're honest, the whole thing about honesty is that uh, you know at well at least you're being honest, right? I mean, you know. Right. If nothing else, there is a virtue in honesty. Right. That's what I say. Uh, I, I forget what book I read that from, but I, I think it was a, I think it was a, it was some kind of a poetry book. I read a book on poetry and it said uh, and it says something on the lines of uh, if nothing else, at least there's a virtue in honesty. At least you're telling the truth. Right. I mean, it's not like a, it's not like you're lying. Right. I mean, it's not like I'm lying. I'm not I'm not, you know, purposefully. I'm not sitting here saying that there are people who are legitimately 65 years old, retiring and bankrupt. I mean, it legitimately happens all the time. I've seen it happen three times in the last two years with my own two eyes. You know, and, and I'm telling you, and, and for whatever it may be, at least it's the truth. 
And it's like, well, at the end of the day, if you just got a job, you know, and you had good benefits and you had a retirement plan, then I mean, you know, then you would have legitimately worked half as much and you would have been able to retire with some sort of dignity. But now you're in a situation where you held onto your worthless business for 25 years. Your business was not making money to begin with from the very beginning. And you just held on to the thing for dear life for I don't know who I don't know. God knows only, you know, you know, I don't know why you did that and why you held on to your worthless business for so long. And it's like, congratulations, now you're 65 without a retirement. I mean, you know, it's like, what, you know, it's you win, you play stupid games and you win stupid prizes, right? That's the old saying. And so it's like, you know, and, and so when I, uh, so as of right now, at this very moment, I'm going to walk y'all through this with me because over the next six months, I am actually going to look to uh, increase my income by 70%. And so uh, maybe when I take y'all through it with me, uh, y'all will begin to understand and you'll and you'll actually begin to understand that uh, if you decided that you want, if you woke up tomorrow, if you legitimately decided at this very moment that you wanted to make more money, it is largely up to you. It really is. Uh, you know, and so uh, and I'm not, I'm not the only person that is capable of doing this. I've already said, uh, you know, you're not a lizard, right? I mean, you're you're a human being. And the whole idea of being a human being is that you're a rational creature, right? You're capable of rational thought. Like you can legitimately sit there and think about your life. I mean, a lizard can't do that, right? Uh, a cow can't do that, right? I mean, a, uh, you know, you know, uh, a dog cannot do that. You can't, I mean, uh, can they? I don't know. But I mean, uh, you're a human being. You're not a lizard, right? And so if you want to make more money, if you want to make more money, it is largely up to you. And, and this is the, and this is what I'm, uh, and I'm going to show you how I do it. So over the next six months, I am looking to increase my income by 70%. I'm going to do it uh, uh, essentially on purpose. I'm, I'm essentially saying I'm, I'm going to go and make more money. And I'm not the only person that is capable of doing this. If you're sitting there in a room right now, and let's, let's just take the median income. I've always said that 90%, if you take a look at the statistics, 90% of all people in America, it does not matter where you live, whether it be New York, whether it be California, whether it be Texas, the median income in America is $37,000 a year. The median income is 37,000 and 90% of people make under $90,000 a year. And so, uh, you know, let's just take the median income. The median income is like 40 grand. If you take a majority of people, about half of them will be making about $40,000 a year. And so let's just say we take the, uh, the median income, $40,000 a year. Lucy, Lucy, let's say you take the median income of $40,000 a year. You can essentially, if you sat there and you really thought about it for a minute and you, and you grounded yourself and, and, uh, and maybe I'll tell, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So over about the last 24 hours, I've really been thinking about this. I've been thinking about it and I was like, okay, so I'm, you know, right now I actually messed the math up and it's like over the last, uh, Okay, so yesterday I made $6,750. I made $6,750, and so that means for the month, the month is over tomorrow, right? Tomorrow is the last day of the month. And so for the month, I made about nineteen grand in the cattle business. So I made about nineteen grand this month. Last month, I made about $6,500, and then the month before that, I made about $6,500. And so uh, I essentially made about, about nineteen grand. Uh, I essentially made about nineteen thousand dollars in the cattle business this uh, over the last three months, and then uh, and then over the last three months, I also made twelve grand. I also made a four thousand dollars a month uh, on a W two, and so uh, I made a uh, I made a uh, thirty two thousand dollars, right? And uh, I made thirty two thousand dollars. So essentially, over the last three months, I've made about fourteen thousand dollars a month. And so I'm taking my $14,000 a month and I'm going to increase my income to about $20,000 a month. That's the plan right now. And I'm going to do this essentially. I'm not going to say I'm, you know, it's because uh, at the end of the day, it's like if the feeder cattle market goes down or whatever it may be, right? 
you know, whatever it may be, uh, there are things that are outside of my control. But I am going to essentially set myself on a path to increase my income by 70%. That's the big goal. And so, and it's like, uh, when I talk about this, it's like, let's say you're in a situation where you're essentially just the average American. You're the average American. If you took, a, if you took everybody in America and you put them in a room and you asked everybody how much money they make, essentially half of the people would be making about $37,000 a year, about $40,000 a year. And so equi the equivalent of, of this for you is essentially if you're making uh, $40,000 a year, it's like you would wake up and you would be making about uh, $70,000 a year. You know, over the next, uh, you know, over the, you know, and so uh, for me, it's like going from 14,000 to 20,000 is like uh, if you uh, if you make 40,000 going to maybe about 65,000. And it's like if you really took a look around and if you make $40,000 a year, and you were going to and you legitimately sat in a room and really thought about it and you really looked at your opportunities you really sat there and thought about it and you really took a look at your opportunities you could probably find something that will pay you $65,000 a year you probably could and me when i take a look at my situation and it's like i make $14,000 a month right now and i'm looking to to increase my income to 20,000 when I really take a look at my situation, I have found a, 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 a reasonable way. And I've always said that, you know, the idea of a guarantee is that there is no guarantee. I mean, if you're and I've always talked about this idea of that if you're poor, you, you probably you sit there and you think about guarantees. Right. Oh, my God. Well, I want a guarantee. I want a guarantee, right? I want a guarantee, oh man, you know, I want a guarantee for this. I want a guarantee for that. I want a guarantee that I'm going to go from making 40000 There is no guarantee. At the end of the day, I've always talked about this too, but when it comes to like, uh, when it comes to making decisions and when it comes to like, uh, you know, the big idea is like uh, you're sailing a ship. It's like essentially everybody is sailing a ship and, you know... Uh, there is no guarantee. I mean, you're going to have to sell your ship. I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, it's like, what do you want me to tell you? I mean, there is no guarantee. You know, and it's like, and it's like a good way to look at this in terms of business ownership is that when you look at a business, the greatest risk to every business is the owner themselves. Every single business. I mean, it's like, a, you know, at the end of the day, tomorrow, at the end of the day, you know, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, the markets aren't really going to change. I mean, you know, things are not really going to change. And it's like uh, at the end of the day, it's like if you really take a look at it, the greatest risk to any business is the business owner themselves. And so it's like, you know, I don't know what to tell you. There is no guarantee. I mean, what do you want? I mean, legitimately, it's like, uh, you know, there is no guarantee. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, you know, how you uh, possibly like, I don't know how you went, uh, uh, you know, along your life. How did you possibly, you know, get to a point in your life where you're looking for a guarantee? What even is a guarantee? There is no guarantee. I mean, there is no guarantee, right? I mean, it's like uh, there is no guarantee. But I mean, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to, you know, methodically, I'm going to look to increase my income by by 70 percent over the next six months and how am i going to do it well when i take a look at my uh, when i take a look at everything that i got going on if i you know take my animals with the uh, with the commodity markets where they are right now with the feed prices where they are right now with the cattle prices where they are right now if I feed my animals a commodity feed, I essentially make a positive return on my animals. Granted that I buy my animals, granted that I purchase one to one and a half type medium large frame animals at a at a at a certain price, right? It's like if I purchase these animals, like let's say I go to the sale barn and uh, and I purchase an animal, a one to one and a half type medium large frame animal. I take a 10% deduction off the animal and then I cut the price in half and that's the uh, that's the price that I'm looking to purchase an animal for and if I purchase an animal for that price and I feed them on the commodities when they're at this price right now and I feed them essentially 3.25 you know I've already gone through all this right 
If I give them 3.25% of their body weight a day in dry matter of a 65 to 70% TDN, 12 to 14% protein feed, and I run the numbers, essentially what I'm talking about is if I feed a 500 pound animal, about 20 pounds of feed, you know, and I can almost guarantee that if you use my numbers, they're going to be somewhat accurate. I mean, you're going to be off to the right. You're going to be off to the races on the right foot. You probably are. And, and I've already, you know, and the big idea though right now is that right now the commodity markets are set to make money in the cattle business. You know, they just, uh, when I take a look at the overall commodity markets, and here's another way to put it. You know, uh, two years ago when I got started, uh, you know, about uh, six months into my, when I was uh, running cattle, there was a massive drought. And uh, feeder cattle were selling for about uh, about uh, about a thousand dollars a head. I mean, if you had an 800 pound animal, they would sell for about eleven hundred dollars a head. You would get about eleven hundred dollars per animal. And uh, hay was selling for a hundred and fifty dollars a bale. And in these in in this situation, you would buy a calf for about four hundred dollars. And if you fed that four hundred dollar calf up to eight hundred pounds you would make $1,100. And hay was $150 a bale. And in these situations, what you are seeing in front of you right now, it does not work. And so here's another way to put it. Essentially, when, it, when I talk about farming is a skill and that if you do not have the skill, you cannot be a farmer. Essentially, what I'm talking about right now is that if you, at the end of the day, if you cannot grow enough grass to feed about five calves per acre, you cannot make money in the cattle business like me. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. And you're going to end up in the, you're going to, you know, um, me, when I grow grass, I can grow enough grass to feed about five to 10 calves per acre. That's how that's, that's uh, the, uh, the amount of grass that I am capable of growing myself as an individual. And if you are not capable of growing grass like that, if you are not capable of looking at grass and understanding the feed qualities of grass, when should you put your animals on the grass? Well, how many animals can you raise per, per acre? You're, you're probably, I mean, you're not going to get anywhere close to making anywhere near as much money as me. You will legitimately end up in a situation where you start a cattle business, you work 80 hours a week, and then you barely make enough to get by, and then you're 70 years old without a retirement. That is how you will end up. Oh, I mean, I can almost, I would be willing to bet 50 to 1. That is how you will end up. Every single last one of you. You say you want to be in the cattle business. At the end of the day, this this business model, what you see, what you are seeing right now, this only works under circum under certain circumstances. The commodity markets right now are set to make money in the cattle business. I can buy feed for very cheap. I can buy a a, a, a bale of hay for about forty dollars right now. If the price of hay quadruples, if the price of feed quadruples, this no longer works. This business model, it no longer works. And so this is what I'm saying, you know, and, and I've said this repeatedly in the past, you know, up until this moment. But this is also why I am not suggesting that people go running into the cattle business right now. Because why? The cattle business is too easy right now. It's too easy. You know, any, you know, practically anybody can go running into the cattle market right now and just make money. It's, it's way too easy. And these conditions are not going to last. I would be willing to bet these conditions are not going to last. And even in these conditions, most people are still losing money. Think about it that way. You know, most people are still losing money. And so, and realistically, when it comes down to it, if I am not able, you know, I'm, I've already talked about this, but the big idea of growing grass is that if I were to overlap a, a graph of biomass accumulation, of legitimately how much grass am I growing on my field? If I had a graph for how much biomass am I accumulating in terms of my grass, and then I overlapped it with how much money is going into my bank account, they would almost always be going in the same direction. 
if my grass is growing at a at a pace that it's like I'm able to feed 10 calves per acre, if legitimately if I am in a situation where it's like my grass is growing in so well that I am able to raise about 10 calves per acre, that's how I end up in a situation where like how I ended up with the winter wheat. You know, about about six months ago, I was making about twelve thousand dollars a month on a 10 acre field. Right. And it's like, how did I do that? Well, I had a lot of moisture and my winter wheat was legitimately growing in so fast that even when I had four calves per acre, the grass was up to my knees. Right. That is why. And it legitimately, if, if I were to put this as logically as possible, if I were to put this as logically as possible, if I were to have a graph for how much grass am I growing and how much money is going into my bank account, they would almost always be going in the exact same direction. Almost always. This situation where you, what you're seeing right now is like corn is at like a five year low. Like if you really want, you know, it's like, well, I'm gonna give you the information. When I look at the commodity markets right now, corn is at like a near five year low. It's corn, the price of corn is legitimately so low that I personally don't think that it's going to go much lower anymore at all. Legitimately, that is how that is how low the price of corn is. I don't think it's going to go any lower for at least five years. I, I maybe even ten years. That is how low the price of corn is. And I've always said that corn is the baseline for cattle feed. If you want to know what's going on with cattle feed, the way you do it is you look at the commodity markets and you look at the price of corn. You look at the price of corn. And the price of corn right now is so low that I, I, I personally do not think that it's going to go significantly lower at all for like the next 10 years. That is how low the price of corn is. And feeder cattle are legitimately like two dollars off of their the highest prices that they have ever been in these in this circumstance this this business model works i can legitimately just call a broker mix commodity grains feed it to my animals and i'm essentially making about seven thousand dollars a month about six thousand dollars a month in these circumstances this business model works but in reality, when it comes to the cattle business, if I personally was not capable of growing grass at, at a very high level, like if I could not grow grass to a point where it's like I could feed five calves per acre, then I could not make it in the cattle business. The money will, will essentially go so thin that I can almost guarantee that nobody will want to do the business anymore. I can almost guarantee, like if you legitimately want to end up in a situation where you're feeding 1,000 calves a year to make 60 to make 60 grand, then knock yourself out. If you legitimately want to do that, would I want to do that? No way, not at all. I would not do that. Why would I? Why would I go and and run 1,000 cattle a year to make 60 grand if I can go and make 60 grand just doing something else? Right? Why would I do that? I I, I mean I could legitimately just you know you know I, the, you know 60,000 year. What is that like a you know, you can go and be an engineer. I mean, you can just go and get a job, right? Go and be an engineer. Go and be a car salesman. You know, go and be a police officer. I don't know, right? I mean, go and do something else. That's 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 how I think. It's like if I was legitimately put in a situation where it was like I could be a car salesman and make $60,000 a year, or I could run 1,800-pound cattle a year to make six to make the same amount of money i would not choose to start the business why would i go and run 1000 calves a year to make 60 grand right i mean that's a horrible idea right i mean i'll go and be a salesman or something right i mean legitimately just go i would just go and get a job why would i why would i do that i mean you know you know it's like i mean just i mean personally that's what i think and it's like you know and i mean like me uh I would say that on the average, oh, uh, okay, and I've talked about this too, uh, but you know, it's like when you take a look and when you see this, 
it's like you know and you take a look and you go oh well this you know me realistically right now within the next six months i'll be going up to about two million you know i'll have generated about two million dollars in about the last year and it's like well and it's like when you take a look at it and it's like well how do you have two million dollars when you only make 20 grand you know when you only make 20 grand a month how do you have two million dollars right you know it's like how did you generate two million dollars when you only make 20 grand a month and it's like, well, you know, the big idea is through equity. And I've already talked about this. And, you know, the big idea is through equity. And, uh, you know, it's like that. And this is also what I mean by when you really take a look at numbers. I mean, you know, they're just kind of a numbers are just kind of a, like, because it's like when you look at, you know, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, it's like net worth. Uh, and, and the thing about money is that after a certain point, the money really does not do anything. Um, I actually, over the last 24 hours, I actually spent a lot of time thinking about this because I'm going to actually set myself to make about 70% more money over the next six months. I've decided that I'm going to go for it. I've decided that I'm going to go for it. I've made a plan for myself. I made a, I made an, uh, you know, a plan of how am I going to do it? You know, I got this, uh, I got this, uh, real estate, uh, you know, I got this new field that I'm, I got a, uh, I got an option contract on it until the end of December. And so I essentially have until the end of December to find financing for this property. But the, uh, the owner wants proof of financing by October 31st. I'm in a situation right now when I'm, when I, uh, look at my cattle and, uh, I appraise my cattle for their current value. I'm essentially in a situation where every time I sell about five, 550 pound animals, I make enough money to buy about eight animals. And with the overall commodity markets where they are right now, I can genuinely just call a broker, mix the feed and give it to my animals. And when I do that, I will actually make a positive return on my feed. And so uh, in this situation, feed is not even an expense. I'm actually making money every single time I give feed to my animals. And so in this in this current circumstance that I am in right now, I am going to essentially take my earnings and then purchase new cattle with my earnings. That's essentially that's the long story short, right? I've got a 50 acre field that I have an option contract on. I don't have to finance it until about the end of December until about October 30. Uh, well, until October 31st, by October 31st, I need to, you know, have proof of financing and then uh, uh, once I have that done, essentially, I will take my cattle, I will liquidate my animals. And when I liquidate my animals, I will make a positive return on my animals, right? And so when I make a positive return on my animals, I'm going to take the money that I'm making and I'm going to reinvest it into my cattle. And so that's essentially how I am going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, yesterday and this morning, uh, I sat there and I really thought about it. And I was like, uh, you know, and this is a, uh, and and this is also what you know, and I've been talking about this too. But you know, if you're in a situation where, let's say, you make you're you're a, you're a, you're just the average American, right? You're an average American. You make uh, forty thousand dollars a year, and if you really sat there and take a look at, and took a look at your situation. You could, you could, you could increase your, your income by 70%. You could, if you really thought about it, you could do it. I mean, strategically, uh, strategically, you know, uh, methodically kind of section off your pie, right? I mean, well, how do I make this happen? Right. You know, like me in my situation, I just kind of broke it down into many pieces. I'm making $14,000 a month right now. I'm going to take my $14,000 a month up to 20 grand. So how am I going to do that? Well, you know, there are things that are out of my control, right? And I've been, I was talking about this too, but from what I have currently seen in, in just my local area and uh, just uh, taking a look at uh, what other people are uh, going through in other parts of uh, America, the weather is very good right now. The weather is very good. Uh, the feeder, uh, excuse me, the uh, the feeder cattle contracts are looking very good. Uh, feeder cattle futures are looking very good. Corn futures are looking very good. The weather is looking very good. Over the next six months, I do not anticipate that grain prices are going to skyrocket. I mean, if, if World War III starts, and this is also something that, uh, you know, I've kind of been thinking about. 
you know, like, uh, I don't think that Ukraine is winning against Russia. I'm just going to say, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think the, like, when I really take a look at the situation, I don't think that Ukraine is winning against Russia. I don't think they are. I think that you, I think Russia is, uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 uh, is winning in Ukraine. I think so. And so if something like World War Three happens in the next six months, that's completely out of my control, right? I mean, uh, I mean, like if something like that happens and, and you know, uh, the grain prices skyrocket, then that's completely out of my control. There's nothing that I can do about that, right? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be deathly terrified of World War Three happening. I know that, I mean, but if, if things just go comp just kind of okay, like from what I am seeing right now, what I am seeing right now is that I think when I take a look at the corn futures and when I look at the feeder cattle futures and I take a look at like the weather map and then I listen to what other people are doing, you know, I think that the price of grain is going to stay steady for about the next six months. And, uh, and the feeder cattle are probably going to stay steady for the next six months, too. If World War Three happens, then I don't know. Right. I mean, that's that's not something that I can. I can sit here and be like, oh, my God, World War Three is going to happen in five months and 12 days. Like, how am I? I don't know. You know, World War Three might happen. And if World War Three happens and the then grain prices might skyrocket. I mean, I don't know. Right. I mean, there are things that are out of my control. But from what I am seeing and from what I've just from what I the information that I have had that I have accumulated as of right now, I think that feeder cattle prices are going to stay steady and that the uh, price of corn is going to stay steady for at least the next six months. And so I see an opportunistic time frame right here, right now to essentially capitalize on the market. And I believe that if I capitalize on the market methodically, I can increase my income by 70% over the next six months. And uh, in six months, uh, realistically, I'll be growing grass. And once I start growing grass, I mean, uh, when, well, when I grow grass, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, y'all probably have seen me grow grass. I mean, I can essentially grow so much grass that I am able to feed uh, five to ten calves per acre. You know, uh, realistically, if you've watched me grow grass, I mean, I mean, you already know that, it, you know, I, I've, I've shown it to you multiple times how I plant grass, how I grow grass. And I'm essentially capable of growing grass to a level where I am able to feed five to ten calves per acre. And when I do that, I make a boatload of money. I make a boatload of money. It doesn't matter what the cattle market's doing. It doesn't matter what the corn market is doing. If 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 I uh, if I just keep an eye on the cattle market to a reasonable degree and I just focus on growing grass and I put the cattle on the grass, I make a boatload of money. I, you know, over the last six months when I was growing winter wheat, I made almost twelve thousand dollars a month, and uh, on a ten acre field. That's how that's how much grass I grew. And uh, that was the quality of the grass I grew too, because if your grass is low quality and you feed it to an animal, they're not going to put on weight correctly. And if they don't put on weight correctly, they're not going to condition properly. And if they don't condition you properly, you're essentially going to be stuck in a situation where you're selling somebody your problems. And if you sell somebody your problems, you're going to lose money. I've already talked about that a lot too. You know, if you're in a situation where, you know, you know, your animals are kind of like a, they're at a body conditioning score of four and they're not conditioning properly. You got them on some janky grass and you're not feeding them properly and they're sliding back on the body conditioning score. And, you know, then you're going to lose money. I don't know what else to tell you. You're, you're going to lose money. I mean, realistically, like when you grow grass, this is also why when I talk about when I grow grass, I talk about things like looking for the flag leaf. Right. You're going to have to look for the flag leaf. And when you look for the flag leaf, almost every grass does the exact same thing. When you uh, when you grow grass, uh, when you have a when you have a grass that's beginning to develop a flag leaf, but does not have a uh, a uh, uh, does not have uh, flowering sites, then that grass is in a late stage of vegetation, early stage of blooming. And when you feed grass at that at that stage of development that has been fertilized properly then you're then you're likely going to be in a situation for most grasses where that is going to be the highest quality grass that you can feed an animal without having to worry about the animal bloating to death or uh, having the animal not conditioned properly because i mean if you if you have a grass that's uh, that's already gone to seed uh, you know if it's already gone to seed and Especially if it's something like a rye grass, if you feed your animals a rye grass and they got small animals and they got teeth that are coming in and they're chewing on those rye grass seeds, you know, they're going to get abscesses in their mouth and, you know, they're going to have all sorts of problems. And then they're also not going to develop properly. 
you know if you have a grass that is uh you know it's all seeded out it's all seeded out and you put a little uh and you, and you put a 350 pound or less calf on it they're they're gonna they're still gonna starve to death they're not gonna be able to you know uh, they're not gonna be able to you know eat a, a diet that is nutritious enough for them to survive if you got a grass that is uh you know that's in very uh that that's in its middle stage of development and you and you fertilized it improperly let's say you fertilized it a little bit too hard or even if you fertilized it a little bit too little i mean even at that point but if you don't know how to you know identify the development the developmental stages of your grass and you put your animals on it and you got a 350 pound animal and you put them on that grass they're going to get acidosis and if you give an animal that's under 350 pounds acidosis the chances of them dying skyrocket you know, you're already off to a bad start. It's 15 percent. Like if you go and you buy cell barn calves and you bring them home, the chances of them dying from what I have personally seen is about 15 percent. And if you give them acidosis, the chance of them dying goes up to about 65 percent. Maybe it's like it's like over 50 percent. And so it's like you you're really going to have to learn how to grow grass. And this is also and I've talked about this repeatedly in the past. But if I were going to get in the cattle business, I wouldn't even worry about the cattle business. I would get in the hay business first. I would get in the hay business. I'm just going to be completely honest. Because if you cannot grow grass, then you can, I mean, I can almost guarantee that if you cannot grow grass to at least a, to at least a level where you are where you are capable of running about five calves per acre, then you will not be able to make a significant amount of money. You will not be able to make enough money to where it actually where you should have actually just gone out of your way and became a farmer. You probably won't. I mean, you will probably just be better off if you went and bought a fourplex. If you bought a fourplex, if you uh, if you bought a business that was straight revenue and you purchased it on like a one and a quarter EBITDA and it had no revenue, it was just straight revenue with no real estate. I mean, then it's, it's you know, something like you would have probably been better off if you just did that. Because, I mean, you really, I mean, I personally would not want to end up in a situation where I am feeding 1,000 calves a year to make 60 grand a year. I would not want to be in that situation. You know, I personally would not. I would just go and do something else. You know, if that was how I, and I understand that there are people out there that make a living doing that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I personally would not do that. You know, it's like I could go and be a car salesman. You know, I could go and uh, do something else, right? I, you know, uh, you know, I could go and do something else. And you know, uh, you know, it's like you don't. I, and I, and I've personally seen people, sixty-five years old, that bankrupt when they're sixty-five. They bankrupted when they were sixty-five. For 35 years, they held on to a business that didn't produce money for them from the very beginning. They barely made enough to get by. They bankrupted when they're 65, and now they're working as a cashier at a grocery store, and they're 65 years old. I would not want to end up in that situation. I personally would not. And so it's like, you know, and it's like if you're in a business and it's like you barely make enough to get by then why run the business, right? I mean, why? I, I don't understand. You know, and maybe you should just think about it. You know, it's like you could legitimately just go and buy a fourplex. If you bought a fourplex and let's say, you know, and then it's like, congratulations, you know, I don't know, maybe in 10 years rates go down and you refinance your loan. You use the fourplex to pay for the fourplex. And it's like now you're building equity and your net positive cash flow. And in 20 years, congratulations, now you're making a whatever, right? You got your, uh, let's say you're just an average American making uh, $40,000 a year. And you're making your extra $7,000 a month off of your fourplex. And then congratulations, you're making eleven grand a year. And it's like at that point, you can go and do whatever you want. I've already talked about this, but, you know, after a certain point, when you hit a certain amount of money, you can practically do whatever you want. Like if you were legitimately in a situation where you were net positive $11,000 a month, you could even go and buy yourself another fourplex if you felt like it. And then now it's like, congratulations, you got two fourplexes. You know, you can retire and make your uh, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month and just call it a day. I mean, why go through this life or death battle over mediocrity? I mean, it's like you're going to be stuck in a situation where you're running 80, cal you know, 1,000 calves a year to make 60 grand. It's not a good idea. From the very beginning, it's not a good idea. For me personally, I wouldn't, if, if that was, if I was sitting at a table thinking about my business, 
And, I, and that was how the numbers came up. When I legitimately ran the numbers on my business, I said, okay, well, if I feed my animals a, uh, let's just say that there's a 20% increase in the grain markets and there's an equal 20% decrease in the cattle markets. You know, if the, in this situation, it's already happened before. It's going to happen. It's a matter of when. It is not a matter of if. One day soon, sooner than later, the grain price will go up and the, and the price of cattle will go down at the same time. It will happen. It's a matter of when. It is not a matter of if. And when it happens, just run the numbers. Well, if grain prices, when grain prices go up 20% and when cattle prices go down 20%, what do I what do my numbers look like? I need to feed my animals 3.25% of their body weight a day in dry matter. If my corn is is is, is 10% moisture, I'm essentially needing to feed them 4% of their body weight a day. So if I have an 800 pound animal, that's 32 pounds of corn. If I just use corn as a baseline for cattle feed, you know, essentially everything in the cattle market in terms of cattle feed is going to follow the price of corn. If the price of corn is low, the price of hay is going to be low. If the price of corn is low, the, you know, what, you know, the price of distiller grains is going to be low. And so everything will essentially just follow corn. And so it's like when you're in a situation where corn prices have gone up 20% and feeder cattle prices have gone 20%, they gone down 20%. It's like, you know, and you run the numbers. I've already ran the numbers. You're going to have to run about 1,200 cattle a year to make 60 grand a year. And it's like, are you sure you want to do that? I mean, really sit there and think about it. You know, it's like, are you sure you don't just want to go and get a job? Right. I mean, legitimately, do you not just want to go and, uh, you know, uh, buy a fourplex? I mean, really think about it. Right. I mean, just, you know, and. And I've already said, like, if I was making two hundred dollars a calf, I, w I would not be in this business. I mean, that would be a miserable business. I probably make about seven hundred dollars a calf. You know, if I run one hundred and twenty calves a year, I probably make about eighty four grand. And uh, if I was in a seat and, and, and uh, when it comes to making money like that, the only from what I have personally seen, if you have a way of making money like me, then then don't drop what you're doing to go and do what I do. Right. I mean, just continue to do what you do. I mean, why? You know, you know, I've always said the big idea is that, you know, you know if you legitimately have an objectively better idea than me, then, then stay with your idea. There's no reason for you to go and do what I do. I mean, at the end of the day, if, you, if you're legitimately in a situation where you're you're doing just fine, then I mean, if you're making as much money as me, then just continue to do what you're doing. Right. And it's like in. Oh. But on the other side of the coin, from my personal life, I have not seen anybody that can make as much money as me in the cattle business. I have not seen it. I have not actually seen any, uh, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to sit here and, and uh, fiddle my own diddly, right? But I'm just going to say I have not personally seen anybody that can even get to the 10% mark of what I do, not even 10%. Uh, let's say I make a uh, well here. Uh, you know, once I get my uh, once once I get my farm up and running, uh, you know, I'm going to reinvest my earnings, and you know, over the last three months. On just my cattle, on just my cattle, I made about a, uh, uh, I made about a, about a 30, uh, just on my cattle, I made about a 30, uh, 31 to $32,000, something like that on, in just three months on just my cattle. And uh, everything that I am investing right now is is net positive. Uh, everything. Uh, my calves are net positive. Uh, if I bring home an animal, I'll net positive on them. Granted that I uh, feed them properly and they don't die. Uh, the cattle feed that I am investing on, uh, that I am uh, investing in, is uh, net positive. Every time I feed my animals, I make money on it. And uh, I'm bringing home about a. You know, I've talked about the big idea of about about investing. I brought home about a, about a uh, just about ten thousand five hundred dollars a month in just the cattle business. And and realistically, I made about fourteen thousand dollars a month over the last three months. And uh, just my cattle business, I made about ten thousand five hundred dollars a month. And everything that I'm invested in right now is net positive. My cattle are net positive. My cattle feed are net positive. 
uh you know um, and so it's like uh, every time i bring home an animal if i raise them properly if i take care of them properly i feed them the right diet i give them the right feed uh when i do these things uh you know i'm net positive on everything i make money on the feed and i also make money on the cattle and so it's like let's say i go to the sale barn right i go to the sale barn and uh i buy uh let's say i go to the sale barn and i make uh, like yesterday okay i made six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars Let's say I go to the sale barn and I make six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, and I take uh, I take five thousand of that, and uh, I purchase new cattle. Let's say I make six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, and I purchase six thousand dollars worth of cattle. I have not actually spent six thousand dollars. I have taken my six thousand dollars and purchased an equitable asset at roughly at a value that I have appraised it to be of that value for me. Uh, I've traded the money for an equitable asset. Like when I like yesterday was a very good example. I made six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, and then I bought four calves. And when I bought four calves, I I, I reinvested thirty four hundred dollars, and so I came home with thirty three hundred dollars and fifty uh, thirty three hundred fifty dollars, three thousand three hundred fifty dollars, and four new calves. But those four new calves. Just because I did not come home with the extra $3,400 does not mean I spent $3,400. I made $6,750. I was looking to reinvest everything, but I only managed to reinvest $3,400. And when I reinvested the $3,400, I purchased an equitable asset at roughly its appraisal value that I have appraised the animal at. So I did not spend the money. The $3,400 that I used yesterday to purchase new cattle was me trading the money. That's the big idea of investing. When you invest in something, the, uh, the big idea of investing is that you want to be in a situation where your money itself is growing. That's the big idea. If I gave you, like, me, like and I've already talked about this, but me personally, if I was given $100 a month, I could turn that $100 a month into $100,000 cash within two years. And it wouldn't even be hard. I would actually have to go out of my way to lose money to do that. It would not be difficult. You know, $100 a month is more than enough money to make about hundred grand. That's, uh, that's $1,200 a year for two years. That's $2,400. I could turn $2,400 into a hundred grand in two years very easily and how do i do that i i grow the money when i'm given money i grow the money itself and that's the big idea of investing when you get into investing the big idea of investing is to learn to grow money to make your money make more money that's the big idea if I go and I take this money and I purchase it, this asset, then I can tax deduct this asset, appreciate the value of the asset by doing this to the asset, and then when I liquidate the asset, I will make a positive return. Rinse and repeat forever. If I'm given $100 a month, I can go to the bank and take a loan for 10 grand. If I take a loan for 10 grand, I will have to pay the bank $100 a month. I take the 10 grand, I take a look at the commodity markets. Right now, I, you know, urea is selling for about $550 a ton. Corn is selling for about $4 a bushel. Feeder cattle are selling for about $260, $255. In my local market, I take a 10% deduction off the feeder cattle price. Because here in Texas, we have a massive number of cattle, but our cattle are valued at a, less, at a, at a lesser amount. Usually, our cattle here sell for a little bit less. So I take it and then when I also consider that I am looking to purchase one and one and a half type animals and I'm not looking for just steers, I'm also looking for heifers, then in this situation I take a 10% deduction off of the feeder cattle price. Why? And because that reason. Because I'm not purchasing straight number one commodity type steers. I'm purchasing number one animals and I'm also purchasing number one and a half type animals. I'm not purchasing just steers. I'm also purchasing heifers. 
So I take a 10% deduction off the feeder cattle price. I cut that number in half, and when I go to the sale, I look for animals in that price range. Usually what I'm buying is an animal between 200 and 350 pounds. And so in these circumstances, with corn trading at about $4 a bushel, urea sitting at about $550 a ton, Dried distiller grains delivered. I can get six tons of dried distiller grains delivered for three forty dollars a ton. I can go and pick it up for about two seventy five dollars a ton. I can go and pick up one ton of dried distiller grains for $275. I can go and pick up one ton of corn for $160. I mix the corn and the dried distiller grains one to one, and I feed it to the animals at a ratio of 1% of their body weight. I put them on a free choice roughage material. And when I do this with the current market conditions, I will essentially quadruple my money. You know, and then I give my animals uh, the medications. I precondition them. I give them uh, the, you know, and I, I, I raise the animals properly. I can, go to, I, can, uh, I can go to the cell barn right now and essentially purchase 10 calves. I can purchase one ton of uh, distiller grains and one ton of uh, corn. And then I can purchase about two thousand dollars worth of hay. I can purchase about a, about a twenty bales, about a twenty, about a. Oh, excuse me. Well, even if you purchase twenty-five bales of hay right now, it costs about a thousand bucks. So you go and purchase twenty-five bales of hay. You go and uh, purchase one ton of corn, one ton of distiller grains. You purchase ten calves. You pay the bank a hundred dollars a month, and uh, you put the animals on the correct diet, and uh, you uh, your animals gain about three pounds a day, minimum two and a half pounds a day. You raise the animals to a commercial standard. You get them to about a body conditioning score of six. Within six months, you'll have a two hundred pound calf that weighs about a you know you'll have a, you'll have turned your two hundred pound calf into a uh, into about a about a 600 pound animal and they'll be at a body conditioning score of six if you had a bull you would have castrated it you would have castrated them and uh you would have uh, feeder cattle ready to go to the market and when you take your uh, you know and when you take your seven calves to market you'll probably get about fourteen hundred dollars per animal so all in you know and let's say you get fourteen hundred dollars per animal and you got 10 animals that's 14 grand let's say all in you were all in for a for a 10 let's just say you were all in for a what 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 are the numbers right now like nine grand what's a what's 7500 plus a 160 plus a 270 that's like a that's like eight grand and then you uh purchase one thought you're in all you're all in for nine grand and you made 14 grand you had one animal die you still made twelve thousand five hundred dollars you still you still made a net positive of three thousand five hundred dollars on your $100 a month investment after six months, you essentially turned $100 a month and uh, into about $3,500 a month after about six months. And then you do that again, but instead of instead of this time, instead of doing 10 grand, you do 20 grand. Because now instead of having $100 a month, if your investment strategy is for six months and you got four grand, you're essentially in a situation where you are uh, capable of investing about a six about four hundred dollars. About what is that? Uh, six. Uh, about eight hundred dollars. About seven hundred dollars a month, right? And so you invest your seven hundred dollars a month. And let's say you take a twenty thousand dollar loan. Well, if you took a twenty thousand dollar loan, you'd be paying the bank about two hundred dollars a month. And so you pay the bank two hundred dollars a month, and you just double it up. And it's like uh, after the first year, you've turned your one hundred dollar a month investment into about uh, into about twelve thousand dollars. And then you take your twelve grand, and you do that again the second year, and you just double it twice. And it's like, congratulations. I mean, you're going to, I mean, hopefully, I mean, I mean, uh, but that would be if the feeder cattle market and the commodity markets go sideways forever, right? Uh, not forever, but for at least the next two years. And it would not be hard. Like if I was legitimately put in a situation where I had to do everything again. And in these current market conditions, the easiest cattle market conditions that I have ever seen. I could turn $100 a month into 100 grand in two years very easily. It wouldn't even be hard. It would not even be difficult. I mean, it would be very easy. I would actually have to go out of my way to lose money to, to do that. And so it's like, you know, and oh, like me right now, in terms of my finances right now, I'm actually spending negative money. Everything that I've put money into, I've made a positive return on. The cattle feed, the cattle, everything. You know, I'm actually spending negative money.
And so, and, and I'm, I'm spending negative money and I'm making $10,500 a month. And so, you know, uh, and so it is, I mean, uh, I mean, you should possibly consider that. And, you know, you should sit there and think about money. I mean, I would highly suggest I, that. I mean, at least I do. I sit there and I think about money. And if I was put in a situation where it was like, oh, my God, it's my dream to run cattle. And then I sit there and I look at the numbers and it's like, oh, God, I would have to run 1,200 cattle. I would have to run 1,200 cattle a year to make 60 grand. Then I wouldn't do it. I mean, why? Why would you do that? I mean, why would you be in a situation where you're investing 1,000, you know, you're legitimately putting yourself at risk for like a million dollars and to make 60 grand. I mean, congratulations. You could have made a 6% return on, on the, you could have practically made a 6% return by just purchasing a bond. Right now, rates are so high. I mean, you could have just purchased the bond and, and you could have put your money in a high yield savings account and made the same amount of money. What are you doing? I mean, like, uh, you know, if I was in a situation where it was like, oh my God, I had to risk like, like like a million bucks i mean like 600 grand to make 60,000 i wouldn't do that i mean that's a ridiculous idea i mean I personally i wouldn't if you're in a situation where you're running 1200 cattle a year and you're making $60,000 a year i mean i'm not making fun of you i'm not looking to kick you while you're down i'm not looking to make fun of your situation i'm just saying personally me i would not do that and yesterday i was out uh shooting my uh, my AR15 and I realized what's wrong with my AR-15 is that the uh, the elevation is correct, but I but uh, I was fiddle farting around with my LPVO. Uh, I was uh, I was rotating the thing because the thing was kind of was kind of crooked. Uh, I didn't I don't have like a I don't have like a scope level, and so uh, the thing was a slightly a, a tad bit crooked, and so I I, I loosened the bolts and then I kind of rotated it and then I tightened it back down. And when I did that, uh, I don't know what I did, uh, and I don't have like a like a, a weight measurement uh, a torque wrench, and so uh, whatever they call that thing. And so I just kind of hand tightened it, and when I hand tightened it, uh, I I put my zero uh, off to the right by about two inches at 25 yards, and so uh, you know, and and that's my thing about this whole thing uh, is that I, I personally I do not think that Ukraine is even close to winning. I don't think that Ukraine is even close to winning. I think I think Russia is dropping a hot turd on Ukraine right now. I personally think so. I don't think Ukraine is winning. I don't think they're even getting close to winning. And uh, and it's like if, if Ukraine was winning, I mean, America would not be sending Ukraine billions of dollars. I mean, if Ukraine was genuinely winning, we would just leave them alone. I mean, why would we interfere in a war that it, like, you know, why would the I mean, think about it. This is what I personally think. I don't think Ukraine is even close to winning. I don't think Ukraine is even close to winning. I actually think that they're just flat out losing to Russia right now. And if this whole conflict with Russia and Ukraine turns into some World War Three, I mean, it, it's it, I mean, it, it could be a horrible situation for a lot of people. And uh, and, uh, you know, maybe. Uh, but I know that in the past, Donald Trump was very good at at, uh, at stopping war. He was very good at at uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, at stopping war. He was very good at it. Donald Trump was very good at it, and I hope that you know. And I personally, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you should go and vote. For, you can vote for whoever you want, and I'm not going to be upset with you for who you vote for. I'm not. I truly don't care. You can vote for whoever you want. It's a free country, but I personally think that Donald Trump is going to win. And I also hope that Donald Trump uh, gets a, a, a grip on this war situation because I do not think that Ukraine is even close to winning. And if this whole situation with Ukraine and Russia turns into World War Three, it's going to be very bad. And I'm actually stockpiling ammunition because I don't want to be in a situation where I'm looking to buy ammunition when uh, the market is bad. And, uh, you know, and, and, uh, so I'm actually, I'm actually, uh, buying ammunition, you know, I've got a couple of thousand rounds and this whole thing, you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, and I've already talked about this, but me, I don't, I don't, I don't go around, uh, you know, me, I haven't ever shot somebody. I haven't ever killed a person. I don't really even think about killing people on a daily basis. I don't even think about it. You know, uh, realistically like me, when I zero my gun and I buy ammunition, I also uh, buy frangible ammunition, and uh, and so it's like in a in a uh, 
it's like uh you know it's like uh and it's, okay because here's the thing it's like I've seen people who smoke a lot. I've seen the people who ingest a large amount of PCP. I've seen people who ingest a large amount of methamphetamines. I've seen people who ingest a large amount of crack cocaine. I've seen people who ingest, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, fentanyl. I've seen people who ingest a large amount of illicit substances, and I've seen what it does to them. And uh, you know, and it's like at the end of the day, and it's like a, uh, you know. It, and it's like realistically, even if you uh, even if you shot one of these people, there's a very realistic possibility that they are just uh, they're just not going to die. And uh, and so, I mean, take that for what it just it might be. I mean, what I'm not saying that I'm going to go out and shoot drug addicts. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I see drug addicts every day. I see people selling drugs every day. And, you know, I legitimately see it every day with my own two eyes. And so, you know, I mean, uh, you know, my guns work. And I know, and I, and to a, you know, uh, and my guns work and uh, I, I keep guns that work. I keep large amounts of ammunition and and realistically, if I was left to my own devices, I would not, uh, I would not be in a situation where I go and I shoot people. That that's not what I would do. If I was legitimately left to my own devices for the rest of my life, I would just run cattle forever. Essentially, I would just run cattle forever. I would just I've made my peace with God about the cattle business. I've already talked about the idea of eating meat. Like I've already said, you know, all these I've already told you exactly what I think about. I've told you about exactly what I do. I've already made my peace with God. There's a reason why we eat meat, right? I mean, if we were going to eat vegetables, the world would starve. I mean, if if we were to go back to the old days, I mean, people would be eating meat because meat is a is a massive, uh, concent massively concentrated form of calories. I mean, if you're going to feed a large amount of people, you're probably going to have to feed them meat. You're not going to be able to get it done by feeding people vegetables. Chances are you just won't be able to. And so I've already made my peace with God about things. I understand that it's not a, you know, but it just, you know, I've already, I've, I, you know, I don't really, I, I don't, I don't, you know, to begin with, I don't really consider the ideas of mankind. A lot of people are stuck in the situation that they're in as a result of poor choices. They're not stuck in their situation because they made, they, they go out of their way to make good choices on a daily basis. Right. I mean, they're they're uh, they're stuck in their situation because they make poor choices on a regular basis and th their life is a result of those choices. A lot of people are. I mean, I'm just going to say it. I mean, I make so much money. I can essentially do. I mean, you know. And it's like, you know, and it's like at the end of the day, it's like, I mean, sue me. What are you going to do? Sue me. Legitimately, even if you make half a million dollars a year, I make five million. I mean, it's like, what are you going to do? Sue me. I mean, congratulations. Good luck with that. I mean, I can practically say whatever I want as long as I genuinely believe it. Like, if I want to say that that I uh, that I'm happier making fourteen thousand dollars a month than I am making four thousand dollars a month, and if I genuinely believe it, then I'll say it. Nothing's stopping me, right? I mean, I mean, nothing's stopping. Me. What are you gonna do? Sue me? Congratulations. Good luck with that. I'll get a better lawyer than you. I'll legitimately throw you. I mean, it's like you know, and it's like you know, and don't walk onto my field. If you walk onto my field. You know, I'll shoot you in the leg. I mean, I've already talked about this, and it's like I'll go and get a lawyer. I mean, I mean, I you know, it's like it's, it, and I've already talked about this, but it's like you know, if I make five million dollars a year, if I make two, even even right now, me making two million dollars a year, you know, at two million dollars a year, if you make if you make if you make five hundred dollars, let's say you make, let's say you make five hundred thousand. Let's say you're, uh, let's let's just say you're the, uh, let's say you make, uh, let's say you uh, make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and I make two million. Every time you made a hundred dollars, I made two thousand dollars. So even if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, if you went to work today and you brought home two hundred dollars, I brought home four thousand dollars. I mean, what are you going to do, sue me? I mean, congratulations, good luck. Legitimately, I'll just go and get a better lawyer. I mean, I mean, what what do you want me to say? I mean, you know, it's like I got freedom of speech. I can say whatever I want. As long as I'm not saying, like, we should go and genocide people. I'm not saying we should go and genocide people, right? I'm not saying that 
you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's like I can say whatever I want to a large degree. And it's like, I've already thought about this. And it's like, when I, when I speak, I should just say what I mean. I should say what I mean and uh, mean what I say. And, and if, and if I mean what I say and I say what I mean, then I can say whatever I want. And it's like, you know, and over the next six months, over the next six months, I'll be increasing my income by about 70%. And I'm going to do it methodically. I take, I've taken a look at the commodity markets. I've taken a look at the commodity markets. I've taken a look at my business plan. I've taken a look at how much money am I making. I've taken a look at, I've, I've, I've appraised my assets for what I have currently have. And I believe that I have method and I've, and I've made a step-by-step -step plan for myself. To, to increase my to increase my uh, my income by about seventy percent over the next six months, and uh, yeah, and that was that was one thing. I was like, what what is something that could possibly happen that that maybe it's like I you know it's like legitimately just completely out of my control. Well, I don't think Ukraine is winning. I don't think Ukraine is winning. I think Donald Trump is going to win the presidency. And when, when, and if Donald Trump or, you know, and, and, uh, if Donald Trump does win the presidency, if you want to vote for Kamala Harris, then go and knock yourself out. I mean, I'm not saying go and punch yourself. I'm saying go, go and do it. I mean, go and vote for whoever you want to vote for. I'm not, I'm not, or if you, or whoever, you know, let's say uh, somebody else steps up and takes over the Democratic Party. If you want to go and vote for the Democratic Party, knock yourself out. You know, I'm not saying punch yourself. I'm not saying go and slam your head on a table. I'm saying go and do it. I mean, go and vote for whoever you want to vote for. But I personally think that Donald Trump is going to win. And one of the things that I would I would like to see from a Donald Trump presidency is uh, him get a grip of this war situation. I would like to see Donald Trump get a grip of this war situation because I do not think that Ukraine is even close to winning the war. I actually think that Ukraine is losing to Russia. And uh, I think that it's just a matter of time until Ukraine, uh, Ukraine falls apart and Russia takes over Ukraine. And if this whole thing turns into World War Three, then I mean, then I mean, I don't I don't know what's going to happen. You know, and I'm actually starting to stockpile my ammunition. I'm stockpiling ammunition. Uh, you know, my guns are, you know, my guns, all my guns work. All my guns work. I got I got a couple thousand rounds of ammunition. And uh, yeah. But uh, that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.